from Friday. Forward bending practice today will be different than Monday. We're going to focus a lot on shoulder opening, chest opening. That's really um, one of the key components to forward bends. And it's also a good kind of entryway to next week, which is back bending week, um, because that's another piece of back bends that we also uh, try to maintain. So we're going to start just seated as we always do, and just finding our center, coming into a closer state of presence before we begin, and just kind of getting a feel for how we are, how we are. So our bodies, our minds, our emotions, our energy, our breathing, all of it. So once you find your seated upright position, just take a moment to make sure your shoulders are sitting back and your chest is lifted and spread. And then bring your hands together in front of your heart, and close your eyes. Looking down, away from your brain, toward your cheeks. Sensing the body. Noticing the breathing. Also noticing anything surrounding you outside of your body. Maybe noticing tension. And then with all that information, maybe there's something you'd like to invite into this practice today. It could be come in the form of a word, an image, maybe a mantra, concept, whatever it is. Maybe something to give your practice a little more context today, a little more meaning. As you're ready, keeping the chest lifted, bowing towards your heart. Letting your hands move down. And lifting your head, letting your eyes come open. Welcome. We're going to start in a supported child's pose. So the, the support I want you to use is blocks under your hands and something to connect your butt to your feet if that doesn't happen directly. So it might be as significant as a bolster. It might be something more minimal like a blanket. <clears throat> Just kind of filling the gap so that you feel that connection. And then we're going to elevate the hands, which will help us find a little bit more openness in the chest. So make sure that you arrange yourself well. Be like the princess and the pea story with just getting really particular about your pose. And sometimes the shoulders are uncomfortable here and usually the remedy is to invite the shoulders back to the torso. So if they're kind of painful, it's a sign that the joint doesn't have any direction. So really pull the long arm bones up into the shoulder joint. Try to pull the shoulders toward the hips. And your head might not reach the floor, so just allowing your ears to start to pass through the space of the arms. Taking the very tip of the tailbone down. Keeping enough pressure in your hands that your armpits feel like they're hollowing out. And see if you can rotate your forearms, your inner forearms down as you lift the inner upper arms up, finding that kind of contrasting rotation of the upper and lower arms. Using gravity and the props to help you take the shoulder blades in toward the chest. And feeling that horizontal and vertical space in the back body. And 
just three more breaths here. Now go ahead and start to leave the pose and whatever was connecting your feet and your buttocks, you can move that aside. But you're going to turn around so that the blocks are now going to be supporting the heels toward downward dog. So if your blocks were kind of vertically oriented, then you're going to want to turn them so you have um, the width of them to work with. And then stay, taking a table pose with those blocks kind of ready behind your heels. You'll exhale into downward dog. When we have the heels supported, we can pay more attention to that chest opening experience here because we're not forcing the heels down. We're, we're not kind of losing the length of the trunk to get the feet on the floor. You might even have knees bent here so you can really play with moving the shoulder blades toward the chest. You might notice that your head is starting to pass through the space of the arms. That's a good sign. And try to clean up the pose as best you can. If you're kind of falling into your front ribs, zip them together, bring them toward the back body. And play with the same rotation of the arms that you were working with in child's pose. So the inner wrists, you want to really magnetize them toward the floor. But then the inner upper arms move in the opposite direction toward the ceiling. And attempt to be here for five more breaths. And on your exhale, go ahead and lower the knees. We're going to be moving on to our front body just for one pose, locust pose. So you can move your blocks out of the way. And you might spread out a blanket so that you have a little support to the pelvis and the hips. <clears throat> it's not necessary, but for some of us, it, it makes the pose more comfortable. <clears throat> and then if you are using a blanket, you just want it running with the hip line. You don't really want it on the abdomen so much. So from the hips down toward the feet. And not a lot of bulk to the blanket, just a thin layer is sufficient. And just take a moment to separate the feet wider than your hips. And bring the small toes down, lift the inner thighs up, try to arrange the centers of the thighs on the mat as you would for <clears throat> any prone back bend. We're gonna come into locust today just to kind of get the feel for the external shoulder rotation. So extend your arms back and have the wrists aligning with the shoulders. So you have to raise the arms a little bit higher than they want to go. We always have gravity to deal with. So you might have to take a peek and see what's happening. Your palms are going to face the floor today so that you can really imprint the arms with the flesh of the shoulders moving from the front body to the back body. So you are going to get tired. We're going to, we're going to do this a few times and take rest between. So I want you to first just make sure you're pressing your feet down. You're opening the front ankles. You're taking the tailbone into the body toward the floor. You're extending through the fingernails and you're trying to keep the upper arms rotating from the front arm to the back arm. You want to really imprint this rotation of the arm. So important for some, some of the stuff we're going to do today. Shoot the breastbone forward. Take another breath here in and on your exhale, just make a little pillow out of your arms. Rest your cheek, bend your knees, sweep the legs back and forth. <clears throat> so we're going to do it twice more. So once you've relieved your lower back, go ahead and reset your legs. Make sure you find the small toes in contact with the floor. Extend the arms back, palms facing the floor which of course is the modified pose. The full pose is the knuckles facing the floor. We still have to find the external shoulders there, but today we're gonna just be, a, be with that external shoulder rotation, the assisted version. So shoot the fingernails back, extend through the breastbone, keep your tailbone anchoring into the floor. 
keep the buttocks flesh soft, which is really hard to do because the butt likes to work. So soften the buttocks, find other ways to um, <clears throat> give your pose power besides just using the butt. Wonderful. On the exhale, take that second rest. Bend your knees, sweep the legs back and forth. And we'll do it one last time. So today for forward bends, the only thing that really stays forward in the front body is the breastbone for forward bends. So we're trying to really get a feel for how we do that with these extensions and these external shoulder rotations. So one more time, palms facing the floor, make sure your wrists are as high as your shoulders, take a peek if they aren't. Good, anchor into the small toes on an exhale, just do your best to take five breaths here, holding the pose. Try to smooth out the neck, so don't crease the neck, you might have to look toward the floor to do that. Keep your eyes soft. Come to the top of the next in-breath, and on the exhale, take that Last rest here, crossing your arm, dressing a cheek and sweeping your legs back and forth. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and extend the legs. We're gonna sit for just a little bit to take a Domokasana arms. So you can create a little setup that you can sit upon so that your back is supported. You might need a couple of blankets, you might need one, you might use a bolster, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how high it is, as long as you have the support you need <clears throat> so you're not rounding out your lower back. So have your strap nearby as well. <clears throat> and then we're gonna just start with the hands clasping behind us. And you're gonna take both hands to the left kind of side of your waist. And if you can see my left elbow, it's poking out to the side. So do your best to bring the left elbow straight behind you, good. And I want you to just kind of sense into your right shoulder. And even here with this big uh, assist of getting external rotation in the right shoulder, you might still feel that it's forward moving from the back to the front. So I want you to just see if you can bring awareness to the flesh of your right shoulder and find that external rotation, gently moving the shoulder from the front to the back. <clears throat> and then go ahead and release the arms and you're just gonna be bringing both hands as, as well as you can to the right side body. And then try to pin that right shoulder back behind you and bring awareness to your left shoulder. And gently moving the flesh from the front of the shoulder head to the back, not to the point of pain. There can be pain with shoulder work. So just to your edge where there's enough going on that you feel a little bit of some progress, but you're not being a bully to your body. Wonderful. And then go ahead and release and shake your arms out if you need to. So Gomukhasana has the two arms and usually we start with the top arm, but today we're gonna to start with the bottom arm being fixed is the word used in the light on yoga, fixing the bottom arm first. So you're, we're gonna take the right arm behind us, just cross the forearm behind you. Use your left hand to grab the right wrist and you're just gonna pull the arm to the left a little bit so that you feel or sense your right elbow is right underneath your right shoulder. That's good alignment. And then see if you can keep the elbow in line with the shoulder, release the helper friend here and see if you can slide the back of your left hand up between the shoulder blades. I meant to say right hand, sorry. So we wanna take that right hand, the back of the right hand up between the shoulder blades. It's okay if it's not that high, that's just in general where we wanna go one day, someday. Okay? So now before we grab the strap, just see about how close you are. You're gonna extend the left arm up, wind that arm as well as you can to palm facing back position, and then slowly bending the elbow, keep it on top of the shoulder. See how close your fingers come together. Some of you might be able to connect. Some of you are gonna probably reach down and grab the strap and make a little connection that way. And even if you can connect, sometimes it's not a good idea. Sometimes you're in that kind of pain zone that we're not really trying to work in that zone. 
So we want to really feel a verticality of the elbows. And we want to feel resistance between the elbows. And we want to also take both elbow tips back because in general, our shoulders rotate internally. So if you take the elbow tips back, you're going to start to create that really opening external shoulder rotation. Keep your head on top of your spine. Don't push it forward just because the arm is there. If anything, push your arm back with your head. And maybe close your eyes. I find it helpful because it helps me bring awareness back to the foundation of this pose. So I don't feel like I'm flying to the moon here. I want to have some sense of groundedness. You always want to balance those qualities of extension and foundation. Okay, make sure you're not pushing the belly forward and shortening the low back, which can happen when we work with opening the chest. So again, the idea of kind of zipping the inner front ribs together and taking the tailbone slightly in. Go ahead and release. And just take a sitting Shavasana arm, like you have little sprinklers coming out of your fingertips. 45 degrees, you're lifting the pinky slightly up, you're tilting the thumb slightly down. Good. And then we'll go into second side. So we're going to fix this left arm first. Right hand will be the helper. So you're going to just slide your right forearm, uh, left forearm behind you. With your right hand, grab the wrist and gently pull. So you sense your left elbow is coming more into alignment with the, the shoulder. It's not poking out to the side as much. And then you're gonna let go, but you're gonna try to keep the elbow where you've gotten it and slide the back of the hand toward the dorsal spine between the shoulder blades. You'll notice the elbow will kind of try to shift out again. So you're gonna keep trying to pull that left elbow in, extend right arm up and just see about connection. It might be different on this side. And then maybe go back and grab that strap. Crawl the hands together if you're using the strap. Create resistance between the elbows. Take the elbow tips back. Feel how that helps the shoulder blades move in and lift and spread the chest. And then try to really stay anchored in your hips, your groins, your thigh bones, so we're not flying away. You might close your eyes to help you do that. Just a few breaths. Wonderful. And gently release. Again, just extending the arms about 45 degrees towards the floor. Maybe tilting the pinkies up with a little bit more exaggeration this time just to get the arms as relieved as you need to. And maybe shake them out. And then you're going to find your way up to standing. So warrior three, it's not a deep forward bend, but it is a forward bend. And we're going to practice it in a way that we really have no option but to keep the chest open. And how are we going to do this? We're going to extend the arms back. <clears throat> so usually warrior three, we have the arms extended forward, which of course can create a hollowed out chest, the opposite of what we want. So we're going to be practicing with the arms back and just see how we can feel that really nice open chest. So you can just start on your right foot. <clears throat> and I want you to just step the left big toe back. And if your left hip just rotated back, bring it forward again, your hips or headlights, they're on the same plane. Compact your hips together so you're really kind of hugging the hip bones toward the midline. And then start with your arms kind of extended fully at your sides and your fingertips really expressive all the way to the fingernails. And then on an exhale, you're just going to lift the left leg. You don't have to come into the full expression of the pose, but really try to keep your arms long and your fingernails extending back, your chest shooting forward. And just come to your own edge here. On an inhale, you're going to lift yourself back to an upright position. You can step down with the left foot. Shake your legs out. Put your legs together if you can or keep them separated for mountain pose. And just take a few moments 
So line yourself up in space here to drop the shoulders to receive the breath. So that was a little bit of a challenging pose. So just make sure you're, you're coming into the second side fresh. So you're gonna stay in your mountain pose as long as you need to, to kind of recover. And whenever you're ready, you can let the eyes blink open, step into your left foot, and just start with the big toe, right big toe still on the floor. Adjust your hips into alignment. Have a fully extended right leg. Straighten your arms, no soft arms. So take the bend out of the elbows, extend through the fingertips if you have little weights on each fingertip. And on an exhale, as you raise the right leg, lengthen the chest forward, use the fingertips to rotate the shoulders externally, lift the flesh of the front shoulder, wind it toward the back shoulder. And then on an in-breath, lift yourself out of it. Nice work. Shake the limbs, step back into Tadasana. And just a couple breaths. <clears throat> Wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna transition into Parjvottanasana and we're going to do it first with hands down on blocks. And then we're going to do it free handed with hands behind us. <clears throat> so we're going to have the, we're still facing the short end of the mat. Your blocks are right in front of you. If you prefer to work with a chair seat, feel free by all means to use a chair seat rather than blocks. Your right foot steps forward, the left foot will step back. Make sure your feet are hip width apart. You're not standing on the same line on your mat. And then again, rotate the hips so you're adjusting the hips, pull the right hip back, left hip forward so they're squared up and they're level. Really extend your back leg. Make it straight. Don't let the knee bend at all. And we're gonna raise the arms like we're grabbing that box off the highest shelf in the closet. Lift your chest, lift the sides of the torso, keep the tailbone moving in. Come to the top of an in-breath. And then exhale, lengthening forward until you need to come down onto those blocks or chair, and then spacing the blocks evenly around the inner and outer right foot. Adjust your torso, slide it to the right, which doesn't mean your hips get to swivel, but your hips are still on the same plane. Take three breaths, extending the nose out beyond the big toe and wind the inner arm flesh out and around to the outer arm. Notice how that makes your chest kind of smile or grin from armpit to armpit. Come to the top of an inhale, and on an exhale, leading with your breastbone, bow toward the right shin. Your job is to keep the chest forward, the shoulders back. We try to stay for eight breaths here. After an exhale, you can inhale back to the concave lumbar position, look forward. And then you're going to grab your hips and come up. We're going to stay on the right side just so we don't have to switch our legs more than necessary. So we're going to now try the clasping position where your hands are behind your back. If you prefer, you can grab your forearms. Most of us aren't able to do reverse prayer, but if you're able to do reverse prayer and close the hands, that's where you want to be. <clears throat> Whatever you choose, make sure your shoulders are not curling forward that they're moving externally from the front to the back. Okay, so inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, come forward. And you're gonna pause when your back is level with the floor to just extend the spine out over the right leg, through the crown of the head, the shadow of the nose lengthening out beyond the big toe. And then on an exhale, again, lead with the chest, keep lifting the shoulders, bow toward the right shin.
To help steady yourself, transfer weight to the left across the toe bases because we tend to sit down to the right. So transfer weight to the left across the toe bases and hopefully that gives you a little more balance here. After an exhale, inhale, pull yourself all the way up. Nice. Step your feet together and just pause once you're in mountain pose. Once you've put yourself in alignment, just kind of sensing into the breath, into the body. I tend to feel kind of a, a weightlessness in my arms. I just notice what you feel. There's no wrong answers. And then begin to set up for second side when you're ready. So the left foot forward, the right foot stepping back, slight turnout with the right toes, not huge, but <clears throat> about 60 to 80 degree angle of the right foot. And then turning the hips. So they're evenly arriving to that front body, full extension of your right leg. It's gonna give you more power in the pose. Okay, compact the hips toward midline and then raise the arms, fully extend the arms, lift your chest, come to the top of an inhale, and now lengthen forward, keeping the arms alongside the ears as long as you can, and then find those blocks and evenly spacing them around the left foot. Slide your torso to the left, roll the flesh of the arms from inner to outer, move the breastbone forward, Get the nose out beyond the big toe if you can. Recover length to the left side body. These look great, you guys look awesome. And then at the top of an inhale, stretching the torso toward that left leg. Lead with your breastbone, keep the shoulder work maintained. It's a lot harder to keep it maintained when we don't have the arms behind the back. So in some senses, the, the second pose is easier than the first pose. Of course, there's less contact with the floor in the second pose, so it's more of a balance issue there. But here, it's a little bit more of a, a task to keep your shoulders moving in external rotation. Four more breaths. And after that fourth one, you can come back to that concave lumbar looking forward position. Make sure you're squeezing hips together, hugging them together, moving sitting bones together. You can grab the hips and come up. <clears throat> now go ahead and find your position of clasping, grabbing forearms or, good save Sylvia, uh, grabbing forearms or, what am I trying to say, reverse prayer. If you're doing clasping or forearm grab, try to alternate so you're in your alternate clasp or your alternate forearm grab so you're not being habitual. Take the tailbone in a little bit more, Judy. Good. And then one thing I was gonna say for stability is to take the left foot wider and the right foot wider can help you balance in this pose. So don't set yourself up for failure, set yourself up for success. It's hard to know what modifications are appropriate and what are, I understand that, but it's perfectly appropriate to widen the stance here. Okay. So you found your position, lift your breastbone, inhale, on an exhale, come forward halfway. Just pause there. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen for a couple breaths, try to lift the inner arm flesh and rotate it back. And then on an exhale, bow toward the left shin. Gently transfer some weight to the right across the toes and the ball mounds. And just let your meditation here be on the shoulder rotation. Everything else today is secondary. That's our primary goal. There's three more breaths. And when you finish up the third breath, inhale to look forward, 
Hug the hips together, pull the sitting bones together from all the way up. And then you can turn yourself to the broad side of the mat. Step the feet together. Just take your sprinkler arms again. Just extending your fingertips toward the floor, tilting the pinkies up, the thumbs down, lifting the inner, inner upper arms a little bit more. And then relax the arms when you're ready and hold Tadasana. Okay, so we're going to actually practice all four of the wide standing forward bends. And you'll just need your blocks. So there's four versions of this pose. And they kind of progress. So by the end, we are going to be grabbing our big toes or our outer ankles or shins with the chest opening sensation, hopefully. But just start with your setup. Your legs are spaced appropriately. You have the equilateral triangle of your two legs on the floor, your toes in front of your heels. Your feet are balanced somehow. You're not crashing into the outer small toes. So bring some weight in to counter that. And the first, <clears throat> the first version is hands come down to the blocks of the floor. So tighten up the legs, make sure they're firm. You're gonna raise the arms. Inviting that verticality. And then top of the in breath, start to hinge forward. You're gonna come into that half, half version of the pose. Okay, I'm gonna get you in the pose. I'm gonna run up to my door quick. I don't know who's here. Look forward, breathe, grab the blocks, good. And then exhale, you're gonna bow and you might need to lower the blocks. So you're gonna hold that, I'll be right back. Apologies. We're going to inhale and come out. You guys are so good. You're still there. Whew. Looking forward, grabbing the hips, and coming all the way up. Okay. So take a moment. Your hands are going to stay on your hips for the next one. So bring the elbows in like we did earlier. So they're kind of hidden behind you, which broadens the shoulders. So clamp the elbows. Your thumbs will be useful to gently push in on the tailbone. Lift the breastbone. Tighten up the legs, come to the top of an in-breath, and then come forward halfway. Okay, the work gets harder once we're kind of facing gravity this way, or gravity's facing us this way. So keep working with the shoulders, and then on an exhale, do your best to just complete the forward bend. You might not come in very deep, just do your best to come in as deep as you can. Keep clamping the elbows and lifting the front shoulders, rotating them back. Wonderful. Inhale, lift through the top of your head, come up. Good. Now go ahead and find whatever position you took for Parjvottanasana with your hands. So it could be the clasp, could be the opposite forearm grab, it could be reverse prayer. So pick your, pick your poison, tailbone in, flesh of the shoulders is moving from front to back, lift the breastbone, spread it, top of the in-breath, Exhale, come forward. And then finish it off. Try to keep the elbows moving toward each other. Keep the shoulders working well. 
Keep your breastbone in the sunlight. Inhale to come up. Wonderful. So we're doing four, so I'm not trying to hold you there super long. Go ahead and release the arms. Do your little Shavasana arm reliever position or whatever does the trick. So this last one, we're going back to kind of the first stage where we bring the hands down, but it's gonna to be to the big toes or outer shins or ankles. So the work gets harder because we don't have those helpful hips or clasping positions to keep the shoulders where they belong. So you have to kind of bring that back, okay? So we're going to raise the arms like we did for the first one. But instead of coming to the blocks, you're gonna either grab your big toes with your first two fingers and thumbs, or if you can't reach those, you're gonna grab somewhere along the outer legs pull up or kind of lift up if you're not grabbing toes. And then exhale, spread the elbows wide and see if you can keep your chest forward and the shoulders from kind of rounding forward. Shoulder blades moving into the front thigh. Crown of the head moving toward the floor. And of course your legs are as straight as you can keep them and your feet are as balanced as you can make them. And from here, go ahead and take the hips in your hands. Inhale and come up. Wonderful. And then just walk the feet in, taking one last mountain pose before we move down to seated. So just close your eyes. Try to minimize effort. No unnecessary effort, but of course, all the effort you need to hold this pose well, you want to have. Good. And now we're going to be coming into a, a fluid kind of sequence with Upavishta Konasana, which is sitting wide. So I want you to sit on a blanket corner to, so that the tailbone has elevation, but the sitting bones do not. So you might have it be thick because you might need a lot of height. In which case you can fold the blanket into a, like a triangle. You could fold two blankets and two triangles and stack them. So just make sure you have enough height under the tailbone that you feel your low back is upright. It's not rounded. And then you wanna make sure the sitting bones aren't on the blanket. So you might lift the buttocks flesh and just kind of spread it out. So you feel your sitting bones come down. You have this three prong connection to the floor, the tailbone through the blanket, the sitting bones directly down. And then your feet are gonna go as wide as they do, maintaining the kneecaps looking up and the toes looking up. And then you wanna really compact your legs to the floor lengthening the backs of the knees, extending through the heels so the ankles lengthen. We're gonna be turning to the left now. So taking both hands kind of alongside either side of the left thigh and turning your torso to face that left thigh. Then you're gonna be lengthening your trunk toward the right leg, but still looking at the left leg. You can bring that right elbow in against the thigh for a little bit of leverage. Raise the left arm up and over toward the right foot. Keep revolving your chest to face up to that left ceiling. And then on an exhale, turn and bow over the right leg. Arms come alongside either side, good. Keeping yourself low, start to creep your hands to the middle space between your legs. Inhale, look forward and walk your hands toward your body to come up. Okay, so we're gonna do this four times total, two on each side. So now we're gonna be turning to the right. Your hands on either side of the right leg, turning your trunk to face the right leg. Anchor into your left leg, the one you're not looking at. Tilt your torso back toward the left leg. You're gonna kind of anchor your left elbow into your left thigh for support. Raise the right arm up and over toward the left big toe. 
Keep winding your chest to face to the right. Come to the top of an in-breath. And then gently turn to face your left leg and bow over it, your hands on either side. And then start to walk to the middle space. So just notice how we're starting with the chest opener and then we're going into a forward bend just to kind of keep that theme going. Inhale, crawling your hands toward yourselves to, to sit up. Okay. So one more time on each side, make sure your legs are still as they should be. We're going to turn to face the left again with the chest and the hands around the left leg, turning well. Let your back body kind of angle toward the right leg. Bring that right elbow in against the thigh for support. Raise the left arm up and over toward the right big toe. Keep turning the chest up toward the left. Come to the top of an inhale. And then exhale, facing the right leg. Hands come alongside either side of it. Bow over the leg. And then walk yourself to center. Staying low. Look forward and then walk the hands in. Last time, last side, we're gonna be facing right. Take a few moments with the upright torso just to get a nice rotation. And once you have good rotation, start to lean back toward the left leg, elbow pinning against the thigh. Inhale, raise the right arm up and over. Keep turning that chest, opening the chest to the sunlight. Come to the top of an in-breath and slowly exhale, hands around that left leg, bow over it, try to really align yourself well, breastbone lining up with the leg, anchor into that right leg, come as low as you can and then crawl the hands to the middle space. Just pausing here, keep your arms extended, try to scrub the fingertips toward your body to pull the shoulders back, pull the chest forward. Look forward, good. And then walk the hands in, bring yourself up. Okay, bring the legs together. You can sit forward off of the blanket so you're not on that corner anymore. Just shake the legs out, refresh your legs, do what you need to do. <clears throat> so we're gonna set up for the last few poses which are on our backs. So have, if you don't have a bolster, which is probably the best prop for this, um, you'll set up a blanket or two and just stack them. If you have a bolster, it's going to just be the bolster running across your mat horizontally. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is just taking supported bridge pose to kind of um, counter or offset all of those forward extensions. The bridge pose is a passive back extension. So we just wanna give the back some, some love here. So you're gonna be resting your sacrum on your bolster or your blanket stack. Your feet can be a little bit wider and <clears throat> try to keep the toes in front of the heels so you're not turning your toes out. You're training the toes in. And then unfold your arms and try to take the flesh of the outer upper arms down to the floor, lift the chest, rock your head until your chin and chest are kind of snuggled in together. And then just be restful. So we're not gonna be active here. We're, we're just receiving support. And then you're going to slowly raise your legs one at a time for a supported reclining child's pose. So lifting the legs one at a time, the prop underneath you is helping the thighs come into the chest. You might grab either the under thigh or the shins and keep your chin and chest close. So remember child's pose is one single curve from the brainstem to the tailbone. So we want to tilt the chin into the chest. Your tailbone is curling up toward the ceiling. And if your thighs are meeting your chest, your nervous system is very soothed by this. Rest and digest kind of mode. Okay. 
And then keep your thighs where you have them and extend your arms overhead with your palms face up, your arms as straight as can be. And a little pressure into the backs of the hands. Just like remember the tops of your feet when we did those locust poses on our belly, kind of similar. So press the tops of the hands into the feet. It's gonna help you work those shoulder blades. And then you're gonna take the legs up. You don't have to be stick straight with the legs. Let's focus on the lower sacrum staying anchored to your prop. So rather than letting your lower sacrum kind of cascade with the legs, keep the lower sacrum kind of tipping toward the prop, the bolster the blankets. Keep your chin tilted toward your chest. This is upward facing Paschimottanasana. So it's our seated forward bend flipped over. And rather than the torso working toward the legs, the legs now work toward the torso and they have the advantage of gravity helping them do that. So every time you exhale, just feel the thighs sinking in a little closer. Try to keep your chin tilted in toward your chest. Keep extending out through the fingernails. Notice how we have such an easy way to keep our chest open and our shoulders spread. Five more breaths here. Go ahead and start to fold the legs in again for child's pose. And then you can lower the legs one at a time. And you're gonna move your props out of the way. If you need to move to do that, make sure to roll to your side first. It's better than coming straight up from climbing. And I want you to find your strap. So you might need a blanket support for your head because we're going to stay on our backs. So I want you to extend your legs completely and put your legs in kind of the power mode of Tadasana. So you have your toes above your heels. You're squeezing the legs to the floor, you're compacting your thighs, your kneecaps are set, framed up by your quadriceps muscles. You're minimizing the space behind the knees, I think I said that. So then extend your arms at your sides without the hands touching the floor, your palms facing your thighs. And you're gonna really anchor into your legs, so dig your heels into the floor. And on an exhale, lift your head, let your hands kind of float toward your feet. Bring your navel to your spine. I want you to take five breaths here. Your shoulders move toward the wrists and fingertips. Your gaze is soft. Every time you exhale, you're like hollowing out the belly. So bring the belly toward the back body. Inhale, rest. So your hands come onto your belly, your feet flop out to the sides. A few easy breaths, try to Kind of in, uh, exaggerate your inhale to relieve the abdominals a little bit. And you're gonna do it one more time. So get the legs on board first, activate the legs, then extend the arms. Make sure the shoulders move toward the fingertips, they're not crowding your ears. On an exhale, lift your head, look over your body, and take five exhales again, hollowing the belly toward the back body. Good. Inhale to rest. And now you're gonna find the strap and we're gonna take hold of the right foot. Right below the big toe, small toe ball mounds. And you're gonna wrap your knuckles once and slide down your strap until your elbows hit the floor. Your left leg is straight and it's on duty, it's active. 
And your right leg is the straightest leg you can find, which might mean you're taking it away from the torso to find the straight leg. Chin is tilted into the chest. And rather than tugging on the leg, just try to sink it into the floor, pull down rather than toward your torso. Three more breaths. And softening the knee, you're just gonna to switch to the left leg, same thing. Right leg extends on the floor. Finding your straightest left leg. And once you have the straightest leg, you want your closest leg. So you're kind of finding that sweet spot. You're as close as can be keeping the legs straight. And then you're gonna pull down, really sinking the femur bone into the ball and socket joint. Chin tilted toward the chest. Slow, steady breaths. And now we're gonna put those two together. So the abdominal work and the hand to big toe pose. And we're gonna to attempt to do that, keeping the chest lifted and spread. So what you're gonna do is go back to right foot. Now you're gonna be close to your foot so your arms are straight, but still wrap your hands, it does help. We still want the straight leg also. Anchor into your left leg. So press it into the floor. Take an inhale and on your exhale, raise your head and float the elbows out wide. And bring your nose toward your knee, your knee toward your nose. Keep your chest up. And dig in with that left heel. Good, release. Softening right knee, you're gonna transition. You can keep your set up with your hands, just take it over to the left. Once you have the left leg up, extend your right leg, press it into the floor. That leg is really beneficial if you can tap into that power. You'll get a little more juice out of this pose. Big inhale on the exhale, bring your head up, take the elbows out wide, pull on that strap, move the shoulder blades into the chest, free up the chest, bring it into the sunlight. Four more breaths. Good, and release. Nice. Okay, strap out of the way. We're gonna do supine twist and come into Shavasana. So once the strap is aside, you can cross your right leg over your left. Spread your arms wide. Shift over to your left hip, tuck that under you and right hip above, the legs can fall to the floor. Left hand will help hold the legs in place. And then right arm extended out to the side with the palm up and the head looking toward the right hand. Five breaths. And then you're gonna gently transition to center and just take a moment to rearrange yourself so you start really evenly. And then go ahead and cross left leg over right. Stretch the arms out again. Tuck your right hip under you. Stack the left hip over it. And then use your right hand to just secure the legs in place wherever they arrive, just kind of help them settle. Look toward the left arm. Close the eyes, palm up. And really try to surrender. It's kind of the remaining work of this particular pose is just kind of break through some layers of resistance. Let the spine really twist. Let your exhales elongate. Try to eliminate any resistance between your thighs and where the 
right side body meets the floor. And using an in-breath to come back to center. From there, just taking any other movement that your body would like before Shavasana and getting yourself ready for final resting pose so that you're warm enough, you're supported. We have about a four minute Shavasana today. You might use an eye pillow. You might tuck something behind the knees, like a blanket or a bolster. Make sure your head is supported enough that your chin is closer to your chest. And do your best to take your pinkies slightly up, your thumbs down to give the arms that nice rotation one last time. Palms up. And once again, just sensing into the body. Every cell in your body has an eyeball. You're just very aware of sensation. Being with the breath. Sometimes I picture myself in a little boat riding the waves of breath without being able to see them. Maybe I'm lying down in the boat. Really just be present with the breath. Letting all the effort of this class just fall away now. being with the residue of awareness that the practice allows. And feeling the body as a whole. start to grow the breath, but not in a way that is straining, not in a way that is agitating. Keep the breath smooth and steady. Start to bring a little bit of movement in through your outermost parts, your fingers, your toes. Maybe let the head gently rock from side to side. You might rotate your ankles, your wrists. From there, you might bend your elbows, bringing your hands onto your torso somewhere. You might start to slide the soles of the feet onto the floor by bending your knees. And then you'll find your way to either side of your body. Just remain there for several breaths.
And see if you can move from here to a seated position in the most gentle way, least disturbing way to the body, to the brain. And when you find yourself seated upright, we'll join the hands once again in front of the heart, moving the heart forward into the thumbs, moving the shoulders back, maybe lifting the corners of the mouth, and just taking a moment to feel gratitude in your heart. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. All right, lovely. You guys did really well. I a few times wanted to take a screenshot of how awesome your poses looked. So nice work. Hope it felt good too. So have a good weekend. I'll see you guys soon. And um, thank you. Bye.